Yo, what's up? I'm doing another Mystery Science Theater 3000 box set review. This is another one of the Rhino box sets uh, from a few years ago. This is box set 11. And uh, this one features uh, the Ring of Terror, Indestructible Man, Tormented, and Horrors of Spider Island. That's uh, three Joel episodes, one Mike, uh, three Comedy Central episodes, one Sci-Fi Channel episode. Uh, I can keep going. but And uh, let me see. The special features are uh, something that um, Rhino was doing uh, called the MST3K Video Jukebox Volume 2, which were, they were uh, snipping some of the songs, even from episodes they couldn't get the rights to. To uh, you know, show us a special feature where you can watch. Uh, some of them are good, some of them are not so great. Uh, the best special features on this one is the tormented uh, stuff. Uh, on the episode tormented, uh, we get uh, the MST3K hour Jack Perkins wrap ups for that episode, uh, as well as a tormented reunion, which features uh, Bird Eye Gordon, the director. Uh, happily surprised that he's alive, his uh, daughter Susan Gordon, who's the uh, little girl in the movie, and uh, Joe Turkle, uh, who is sort of the beatnik uh, blackmailer in the film. Here's a cool uh, thing for you uh, trivia nuts. He's also the bartender in The Shining. So I, I discovered that while uh, I was watching this, and I thought, oh my god, he's the bartender from The Shining. That's cool. Um, Let's see, let's get started here. Ring of Terror is, I believe, a season two episode, and uh, it is probably the most padded, boring horror film I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe how dull this thing is. It starts out uh, at, a, uh, at a funeral, and then it uh, cuts very slowly to the uh, guy who runs the, the cemetery, and he starts talking like, he starts going off about uh, death. It's miserable and sad and makes you sad and it's horrible and it's terrible. And what would you do if you had a chance? If you knew you were going to die, don't leave that over. You know, he's trying to be really deep and creepy. And then he just turns around and goes, Puma? He, looks, he starts looking for his fucking cat. I mean, just like that. Like, hey, Puma! And he just runs around and he finds his cat. Uh, cat was hiding behind the tombstone of a uh, teenager named uh, uh, Moffat, and um, yes, there's tons of jokes about uh, Mr. Toffet sitting on his Moffat, and uh, we flash back and uh, find out his story and how he died, and then the movie forgets it's a horror movie for like an hour where we watch this guy who is like 40 by the way pretending he's 20 uh hanging out with other 40 year olds pretending they're 20 year olds by the way i love old movies uh where the teenage leads are played by obvious old people and the teenage extras are you know there to make them look sort of younger but it actually has the reverse effect really you know when these guys are like wrinkled and balding and they're like chatting away with two kids who are obviously teenagers uh, who don't have speaking roles. Anyway, uh, this episode is probably confusing if you check this out uh, all by itself because Servo's head looks strange. It has a cylinder head instead of the, the gumball head. Well, for two episodes, I don't know why they did this. I think the story was to, uh, to keep his head from... Being, they got complaints that his head was too big or something like that. So they they slimmed it down for two episodes and they gave up on it because it was stupid. Uh, but that was in the previous episode, I think, uh, where they did that. And this whole episode, they, nobody mentions it. So it's kind of odd. Um, there's Indestructible Man, which is Lon Chaney Jr. And uh, let's see, I think this is a 1960 film. Uh, and there's also the great, great uh, Undersea Kingdom Part 2, uh, which is a short uh, at the beginning. Uh, this is one of uh, Lon Chaney Jr.'s declining uh, films, actually. He doesn't have a speaking role uh, for the most part. He has one scene at the beginning where he plays a condemned man who goes to the electric chair 
uh, his body is experimented on by a scientist uh, who needed a dead body, and he accidentally brings back to life uh, with super strength, and he's indestructible, so he goes off and kills the scientist, and he starts killing uh, everybody who wronged him in, in life, and uh, it's done up like kind of a almost film noirish kind of 50s, early 60s kind of detective thing uh, with the worst cop ever uh, as a lead, so he, he's horrible. <laughs> uh, there's some wonderful jokes uh, about this uh, in this one. The the cop, the run, there's a running gag in this one where they they get tired of making cop jokes, uh, cop donut jokes uh, throughout the whole episode. Uh, I think it's the robots who get tired of Joel uh, making the jokes. Uh, and at the end, they sign an agreement that they will n not make any more cop donut jokes, which I am told they actually did write up that contract and had all the writers uh, sign that. <laughs> that was actually a real thing. And I did notice they very rarely made any more after that. Oh, uh, They were like that for some reason. They did an episode with um, Robert Reed from The Brady Bunch in uh, the lead role, and they actually all, before they started writing, made an agreement that they would only make one Brady Bunch joke, and they stuck to it. Um, these guys love to challenge themselves. Tormented is the third film, and that is Bird Eye Gordon, who mainly did giant thing movies. He sometimes shrunk people, and some, but he mostly liked to make things big, either big people or big animals or big crickets. Um, really. Crickets? Anyway. Oh, uh, they're even called grasshoppers at once in the, or a couple of times in the film. It's like, you know, don't, don't un undermine your own, like, film. If you've, if you've chosen a stupid monster, try not to undermine it too much in your own movie. Oh, uh, you're, you're treading on thin ice anyway when you pick grasshoppers as your giant, uh, creature. Oh, uh, but anyway, Tormented is him kind of going against type. It's kind of a... Uh, almost an EC Comics kind of horror story with no gore, uh, about this jazz musician who's white, and uh, he um, accidentally lets his mistress die off a uh, off a, a lighthouse. Uh, he's just about to get married that weekend to his uh, his uh, fiance. Anyway, she disappears into the surf, and he thinks, well, okay, whatever, and. Um, she starts haunting him, you know, tormenting him. Uh, the jokes are really on par with this one. Uh, there's so many great jokes about how awful he is and how evil he is. And there's there's jokes where he has uh, sort of a friendly relationship with the little sister of his fiancée, who's played by Burbank Gordon's daughter. She's like eight or something in this. And she has a crush on him, and there's a lot of cutesy, like, uh, flirtation between the two of them. And... Boy, they jump on that all, all, all movie. Um, and lastly, Horrors of Spider Island. I say it like that because that's how the narrator in the beginning of the movie says it. And then we get ten minutes of people dancing. Okay. Uh, this is probably one of the more ludicrous films we've ever seen uh, on Mystery Science Theater. And boy, there's been a few. Uh... It's, it's an Italian-made film, and uh, although it's I, it was supposed to be America's, Americans. Anyway, uh, this dance uh, manager gets this dance troupe together, and they're going to go dance and, uh, for businessmen in another country, and they, their plane crashes into the surf, uh, which features one of my favorite stingers of all time, which they got reactions. The plane is going straight down. And they get reactions from the dancers inside, and I guess they couldn't afford to shoot in a plane, so they just put, like, a black backdrop behind them. And they just get close up to the camera and go, "Ah!" It's hilarious. Uh, also, Mike and the Bots make fun of that uh, in one of the host segments. Oh, boy, this is a funny film. And um, this is, uh, by the way, the time they got to season... Uh, I think this is season, jeez, nine, ten? I think this is ten, actually. Yeah, so, yeah, all pistons were firing. Mystery Science Theater is one of those shows that actually improved uh, with age. 
uh, as they just developed and got really sharper and sharper. Even when like major writers left the show, they, they still kept going and just improving. Uh, this is a great box set. I think this is still available. I think you can get this on Netflix. Uh, my personal recommendations. Um, all these four, all four episodes are fantastic. But, in order of awesomeness, uh, Horrors of Spider, Spider Island, Tormented is a close, close second. Uh, I guess Ring of Terror, third. And Indestructible Man, uh, fourth. But all four are just worth uh, seeing. Uh, I definitely give this five Ram chips. And I think that's it, so push the button, Lindsay.